Hello and welcome back to another Remiting Full video. Several weeks ago, I made a video surrounding the most obscure plot points surrounding the game Infra, so here's the inevitable follow up video. My first video did get a greater positive response than I initially thought it would, so thank you to everybody who gave me positive feedback. However, there was still some information that was left out, and some of it seems to be a lot more important than I had first thought. Now, I could simply mention that Infra was actually intended to be a fan modification of Portal, but Infra is a non-Valve game made on the Source engine, of course it started out as a Valve game mod. The game does feature many Half-Life and Portal references as well, my favourite being the achievement Foreseen Consequences, where Mark throws a brick at the Hammer Valley Dam. Osmo Olut Possibly the most interesting thing about Infra that was left out in my last video is the company Osmo Olut, a beer brand all across the game that boasts the world's strongest beer, you know what you need. Now this brand is very influential, being the world's strongest beer is quite a big deal, although we must accept the possibility that this is simply just a marketing tactic. But the company has been known to plaster advertisement across the entirety of the city. And from promotional art from Voice Interactive's upcoming game, Valter, the band persists all the way into the 23rd century. People actively against alcoholism in general also specifically call out Osmo Olut. The beer has also been called the Destroyer of Stahlberg, for how many people fall prey to the Osmo Olut effect. The company even buys up Walter Tower at the end of the game. There are several places in the game where Mark can drink Osmo Olut. The first is in Chapter 3, where upon drinking, he hallucinates a pathway to a door, which leads to a room full of Osmo Olus. There is a theory that Osmo Olut incorporates green mushrooms into its recipe. Osmo Olut was first produced by Osmo Saarinen in 1988, a local of Auburn Sewer Stahlberg. With Stahlberg being the only place where green mushrooms are said to be able to grow and sharing certain hallucinogenic properties, this theory has some merit. The name Osmo Olut is also fairly interesting. Olut is the Finnish word for beer, and Osmo seems to be derived from Osmotar, the name of the Finnish goddess of beer. Also worth noting is that the founder is named Osmo Saarinen, which suggests that his name is also a reference to Osmotar, which is quite funny, imagine naming your child after the goddess of beer. There are certain inconsistencies concerning Osmo Olut. It is said, as well as being hinted at on every logo, that Osmo Olus was founded in 1988. This isn't inherently a problem until we realise that umbrellas advertising the brand can be found in the bunker, and the bunker was abandoned sometime between August of 1986 and January of 1987. Also in the administration building for Stahlberg Steel, one of the phone numbers is listed on the important phone numbers list is Osmo Olu's customer service, despite the fact that Starbuck Steel was abandoned in 1981, seven years before the founding of Osmo Olu. I would be hesitant to call these plot holes yet, as they can be explained with fairly little mental gymnastics. The phone number in the administration building could have been reassigned, and as for the bunker, the umbrellas might have been left after the bunker's abandonment. Imagine if some homeless person had found the bunker just like Mark did and decided to move in. A likely candidate for this position would be Beer Master. Like most characters in Infra, Beer Master never actually appears in game, but references to him are plentiful. We know that he is strongly affiliated with Osmo Olut and Beer as a whole, evident from his name and slogan. Beer for everyone, except for children. He also hosts the Beer Challenge, a mini game right before the entrance to the bunker where Mark has to find and drink five bottles of Osmo Olut. Refreshing. Could use a drink.
That makes 10 packs of batteries for the flashlight. Don't mind if I did. Beer Master's love of beer and confirmed proximity to the bunker makes him a prime candidate for the owner of the umbrellas. Pontica Network Pontica Network is an illegal moonshine trafficking network that Mark can find multiple documents detailing in the game. The moonshine was trafficked through the Bergman tunnels, which isn't the only illicit practice that goes through those tunnels, and the Pontica is sold at places such as Turnip Hill. Morco there was some information left out about Morco in my previous video, mostly because of its notoriety in the Infra community, placing it high up on the iceberg, where all other links to other aspects of Infra can't be talked about fully without spoiling later parts of the iceberg. So now is the perfect opportunity. First, some more technical facts. B2, the corridor that has the most significant Morco encounter, is actually quite complex. There are four different locations where Morco can appear, and is judged randomly. This is to keep the section scary, even after playing through it many times. There are of course some audio cues that can play, and a flashing light, and looking in Hammer Editor reveals certain features that seem to have been cut, like a wall that looks to randomly appear. There is also some speculation about Morco's origins. There is a good chance that he is one of the seven masked men who built the machine, as in Elo's hideout, we see a drawing of Morco leading Elo to the door that is assumed to hold the underground city, and when Mark tries to enter this door, he is executed with the machine. And as the machine has a Raven logo on it, we can assume this means that the machine also has links to Raven research. Maybe Morco's presence across Mark's journey is the reason why Raven knows so much about Mark's ventures. Cubes the map infra underscore ee underscore cubes apparently can be utilised in game with some modification, and there is some functionality with the map. The moving cubes allows for some parkour possibilities to be opened, and it overall makes for quite a fun map, and it's a shame it doesn't appear in game. Although I don't blame the devs for leaving it out, I can't think of a place where their vibrant colours and glowing cubes would fit in the tonally consistent Stalberg. SNW. The SNW ending is essentially the most perfect ending that you could hope to achieve in Infra. You need to photograph 50% of corruption for Act 1, 90% of corruption for Act 2, and 50% of corruption for Act 3, as well as watching Walter's tape and photographing the cross train in the bunker. Completing this will result in Mark being able to confront Paul and the Blackrock manager in the final chapter of the game, just before the final challenge. I found this door with the keypad, next to the reactor. What is this? Please stay away from there. You wouldn't happen to know the code. Do us all a favor and stay away from that door. What are you hiding? What are you talking about, Mark? I know what happened to those missing Metro passengers all those years ago. I've also seen a videotape that proves Jeff Walker was being blackmailed. It wouldn't surprise me if the power plant was also in on this. What? Those are some pretty bold claims. How would you know all of this? I've been in the bunker where they are keeping the train wreck. I have the photographs and documents to prove everything. How did you get in there? And how are you still alive? Nobody's been there for a long time. They abandoned the project. You seem to know a lot of things. I'll give you that. Why did you ask your boss for the door code? What is he talking about? I should confess something. I made a great deal a long time ago. I promised to bring any information related to the SNW project to a, a certain someone. I can't believe it. So that's why you wanted me to photograph all of those documents. Aunt Deal helped me to get this job, and I kept all that information to myself until someone hacked our server and we lost all the data. The door code is 0489. 
nine. I don't know what you'll find inside, so be careful. We'll have to talk about this once this is all over. We do. I'm sorry for not telling you earlier, Mark. You can also listen to an audio tape from one of SNW's leaders, Sven Olsen, who states how disastrous the whole project was. My name is Sven Olsen. I was one of the leaders of the SNW project. This project was doomed from the start. It was so badly planned that I should have realized how it was going to end. Instead of trying to get everyone working together voluntarily, we, they, just forced everyone into this mess. I thought I was doing something good. But then that metro accident changed everything. I found out there were so many things that no one told me. Everything I knew about the project was wrong. They designed a biological weapon and sold it to the highest bidder. They don't care about this country. Look at this place. We moved uranium from here to the bunker using Bergman tunnels. You can control this whole facility from in here. And why? to secretly filch nuclear material. Listening to Sven Olsen's speech is quite moving. It really encapsulates the game's effects. When you first play through the game, you may think that Jeff Walter is the villain, a greedy CEO who cares about his money more than the well-being of Stahlberg, which served as a well enough story on its own, and many will think that of the game and leave never to come back. But playing the game a few more times uncovers the secret of Stahlberg and reveals that the real villain was never given a face or even a voice, and the result of corruption. And as Mark, Steve, Carla and Arrett travel, getting mixed up in the Pontica network and infiltrating hacker bases, it is all related in an overarching conspiracy that a few people will ever know. There is a custom map made by Kunan that has all the documents in one place, and it truly shows how much lore there is buried beneath the surface. A special thank you to Kunen for making the custom documents map seen in the video, and Salty Walrus for obtaining some of the game footage that I was unable to obtain myself, as well as informing me on some extra information that has been added to this video. And thank you for watching, and bye.